from around the globe, it's theCUBE with digital coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020. Of course, this year, the event is happening all online and that gives us an opportunity to meet with uh, Red Hat executives, customers, partners, and practitioners where they are around the globe in this segment uh, one of our favorites every year is we're talking to uh, the women in open source. Uh, and joining me for this segment, first of all, we have Delissa Alexander, who is the Executive Vice President and Chief People Officer of Red Hat. Uh, this uh, uh, award uh, fits under uh, her domain. Delissa, it is great to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. All right, and we have uh, two of the award winners. So uh, first, uh, if you see right next to Delissa, we have uh, Netha Hussein, who's a doctor and PhD candidate in clinical neuroscience at the University of Gothenburg, coming to us from Sweden. Netha, great to see you. Thank you very much. All right, and we also have Megan berg Sinicki, who is a manager of research and operations at the, the Open Source Program Office at Google. Uh, Megan, thank you so much for joining us also. Thanks for having me. All right, so Delissa, let, let, let me hand it off to you as to give our audience a little bit, if they're not familiar, uh, with Whippin and Open Source, uh, what the initiative is, the community, and uh, you know what, what, what might have changed from previous years when we've talked about this. Sure, so we realize that the tech industry is a great industry for diverse populations, but a lot of diverse populations don't realize that. And so as the open source leader, we wanted to shine a light on the contributions that some of our underrepresented populations are making in open source that try to inspire more people to join uh, communities, to participate, to contribute. We know that more diverse populations help us to innovate more rapidly. Uh, they help us to solve more problems. And so it's really important, especially today with what's happening in the world, lots of important problems to solve, that we really invite more of our underrepresented populations to join in uh, the communities. Awesome. Uh, so uh, absolutely, uh, there, there are lots of people that volunteer. There are lots of people that do it as their day job. Uh, Megan, why, why don't we uh, talk, you have a role, uh, open source, of course, Google has a strong legacy in, in open source in general. Uh, so tell us a little bit about, you know, what you are working on and what you're being recognized for here. Yeah. Well, a lot of the recognition, um, comes from my work with the Drupal Association. I had been with Drupal for eight years, helping to build that foundation and supporting that community in lots of different ways, from fundraising to community events, uh, running sprints and helping with their developer tools. And so that was a lot of what the award was based on. And now I'm at Google and I've been here for about a year and a half and I run their um, research and operations. And so Google, is an expression of open source. And we have thousands of people using thousands of projects. And we wanna make sure they do it well, they feel supported, uh, that we are good citizens in the projects that we participate in. And so my group provides the operational support to make sure that happens. Yeah, D Delissa, you know, what, one of the things that's always fascinating uh, when I go to Red Hat Summit, there's so many projects there's so many uh, participants from various walks of life. Uh, last year at the show, there was a lot of discussion of, uh, you know, it was a survey really and said that, you know, the majority of people that contribute now, it's actually part of their job, uh, as opposed to when I think back, you know, you go back a couple of decades ago and it was like, oh, well, in my spare time or down in my basement, uh, I'm contributing here. So maybe talk a little bit about the communities and, you know, what, what Megan is embodying. She, she worked on a project now she's working for obviously a good partner of Red Hat's that does a lot of open source. Yeah, I love the way she described what her role is at Google and it's, it's fascinating. And Google has been fairly a huge contributor um, in the community for, in communities for years and years. So I think that what we're seeing with the communities and with people saying, yeah, now it's part of my day job is that you know, 20 years ago, the idea that open source development would be kind of on par with proprietary development and on par in terms of being used in the enterprise and the data center was something that I think many people questioned. Proprietary software was the way that most people felt comfortable making sure that their intellectual property is protected and that 
uh, users could feel comfortable using it within the parameters uh, required. So that was the way it was 20 years ago. And then now you think about, you know, most companies, there is some form of open source that is part of their infrastructure. So now open source is no longer, you know, the disruptor, but it's really a viable alternative. And uh, organizations really want to use both. They want to have some proprietary, they want to have some open source. And so that means like every company is going to need to have some need to understand how to participate in communities, how to influence communities. And Red Hat's a great partner in helping um, enterprise customers to be able to understand what those roadmaps might look like and then helping to kind of harden it, uh, make sure things uh, that they need to have, applications they need to have certified or certified and make it really usable um, in a way they're comfortable within the enterprise. That's kind of the special role Red Hat plays. But it's just a tribute to where we've come in the world in terms of open source being really accepted and thriving, and uh, it helps us to innovate much more rapidly. Yeah, and there's there's no better way to look at not only where we are, but where we're going, than talk about what's happening in the academic world. So that gives, brings us to NEPA. So uh, you are the academic award winner. Uh, you're, you're a PhD candidate. So tell us a little bit about your participation in open source, uh, what it means to be part of this community. My PhD project involves using virtual reality to measure the arm movements of people with stroke. Uh, so we have participants coming in into our lab. So they wear these uh, 3D glasses and then they start seeing virtual objects in the 3D space and they use their hands to uh, touch at these targets and make them disappear. And we have all these movement data fetched into our computers and then uh, we write code and analyze the data and uh, find out how much they have recovered within one year after stroke. This is my PhD project, but my involvement with open source has happened way before, like in starting from 2010, uh, I have been editing Wikipedia and I have been writing several articles related to medicine and healthcare. So that is where I started uh, with open, open knowledge. And then I moved onwards and after my medical studies, I moved to research and worked on this awesome project. Uh, so there are multiple ways uh, by which I have engaged with open source thus far. That, that's awesome. Uh, Netha, my understanding is also some of those roots that you had uh, and some of the medical things that you're doing have an impact on what's happening today. So obviously we're all dealing with the, the global pandemic and COVID-19. Uh, so I, I'd like to hear, you know, Netha, you know, what's your involvement there? You know, you were talking about data, obviously it's so critically important that we have the right data getting to the right people as fast as possible. Definitely, yes. Uh, right now, I'm working on writing, uh, creating content for Wikipedia, writing on articles related to COVID-19. So I mostly work on uh, writing about its socioeconomic impact, writing about uh, COVID-19 testing, and also about the disease in general, mental health issues surrounding that, uh, social stigma associated with, and, with it, and so forth. So I use all these high quality references from the World Health Organization, the United Nations, uh, and also from several journals and synthesize them and write articles on Wikipedia. So we have a very cool project called Wiki Project COVID-19 on Wikipedia, where people who are interested in writing articles, creating data, uh, uploading images related to COVID-19 come together and uh, create some good content out of it. So I am a very active participant there. All right, and, and Megan, my understanding is uh, you, you also have some initiatives uh, related to COVID-19. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, you bet. Well, one that um, I'm loosely uh, affiliated with is COVID Act Now, and that is a combination of developers, data scientists, epidemiologists, and U.S. state government officials. And it's looking at how what does the curve look like and how does that curve get flattened if governors made decisions faster or differently than what they're making today? And how does it impact the availability of ICU beds and ventilators? And so um, that is a tool that's being used today by many decision makers here in the US. And my contribution to that was they needed some resources. I reached into Google and found some smart, generous volunteers that are contributing to the data sets. And actually, I just connected with uh, Netta uh, through this award program, and now she's connected and is going to start working on this as well. Yes. Uh, well, that, 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 that's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I mean, Delissa, you know, we, we've known for a long time, if you want to move fast, if you want to connect, 
you know, lots of diverse groups, uh, you know, open source is, a, is, is an important driver there. Uh, what, what else are you seeing uh, in, in your group, uh, you know, with, with your hat as the, the, the people officer? Uh, you know, obviously, uh, this is a big impact, uh, not only on all of your customers, and your partners, but on, on Red Hatters themselves. Well, it is a huge impact. We're so fortunate that we have some experience working remotely. We have about 25% of our population that historically works remotely. So we have that as a foundation. But certainly the quick move, the rapid move to really thinking about our people first and having them work from home across the globe, that is unprecedented. And at this point, we have some individuals who have been working from home for many, many, many weeks, and others that are really entering their fourth week. So we're starting to have this huge appreciation for what it's like to work remotely and what we can learn about more effective inclusion. So I think, you know, back to the idea of women in open source and diversity and inclusion, one of the things you know, we always prided ourselves in is we focus on inclusion and we think about things like, okay, if the person's not in the room, if they're remote, let's make sure we're including them, let's make sure they get to speak first, et cetera. Well, now we're learning what it's really like to be remote and for everyone to be remote. And so we're creating this muscle uh, as an organization. I think most organizations are doing this, right? Creating a muscle that you didn't have before where you're really, really having to think about inclusion in a different way. And you're building a capability as an organization uh, that you didn't have to appreciate those that are not in the room and to make sure they are included because no one's in the room. Yeah, re really important pieces. And Delissa, uh, you know, one of the things that, that's always great about Red Hat Summit is you you bring together all these people, as we just heard, uh, you know, the, the, your, your two uh, award winners here, you know, got connected uh, through the awards. So uh, maybe give us a little bit of a peek as to what sort of things uh, the community can still look forward to, how they can continue to connect, uh, even though we're all going to be uh, remote for this, this event. Yeah, this event is... Uh is going to be a great event and I hope everyone joins us along our journey. We are fortunate that Red Hat, you know, as the open source leader really wants to take a, a leadership position in thinking about how we can shine a light on opportunities for us to highlight the value of diversity and inclusion. Uh, and so we've got a number of events uh, throughout the summit that we'd love people to join in. And we're going to be celebrating our women in open source again at our women's leadership community lunch. Uh, it is now not a lunch. It is now a discussion unless you're having your lunch at your, at your desk. Um, but we're having a great conversation um, at that event. I mean, invite people to join in and we'll have you know deeper conversation and also another look at our Women in Open Source Award winners. But these award winners are just so amazing. Every year, um, the applications that are submitted are just more and more inspiring. And all the finalists were people that are so impressive. So I love the fact that our community continues to grow and um, that there are more and more impressive people that are joining uh, the community and that they're making those connections so that together we can you know, really shine a light on the, the value that women bring to the communities and continue to inspire other underrepresented groups to join in and participate. Uh, Netta, uh, you know, research obviously is an area where open source is, is pretty well used. Just give us a little bit of viewpoint uh, from your standpoint, your, yourself and your peers. Uh, you know, I, I would think from the outside that, you know, open source is just kind of part of the fabric of the tools that you're using. Is it something that people think specifically about open source or does it just come naturally that people are, you know, leveraging, using and even contributing uh, uh, to, to the, what, what's available? Uh, the tool I'm using is called Curitas. It's an open source uh, tool written in Python. And uh, so that gives me the possibility to have a look in deeper into the code and see what's ac actually inside. For example, I would like to know how, what is the size of the target that is shown in the virtual space. And I can know that correctly to the millimeters because it's available to me in open source. So I think these are the advantages which researchers see when they have tools, uh, open source tools. And at the same time, there's also a movement in Sweden and in most of Europe uh, where they want, um, where researchers are asking for publishing their articles in open access journals. So they want most of their research to be published as transparent as possible. And there is also this movement where 
people want, uh, researchers want to have their data put into some uh, open data repository so that everybody can have a look at it and do analysis on the data and build up on that data if, if other people want to. Uh, so there's a lot going from the open access side and open knowledge side and also the open source side in the research community. And I'm looking forward to what COVID-19 will do uh, to this movement in future. And I'm sure um, people will start using more, more and more open source uh, tools uh, because uh, after the pandemic. Yeah, Megan, I, I'm curious from your standpoint, when I think about a lot of these communities, you know, meetups are just kind of some of the regular fabric of how I get things done, as well as, you know, just lots of events um, it, it tie into things. So when, when you're talking to your colleagues, when you're talking to your peers out there, how much is kind of the state of reality today having an impact in any, uh, any learnings that you can share with the audience? Yeah, that is definitely a challenge uh, that we're going to figure out together. And I am part of a group called FOSS Responders. We are reaching out to projects and listening to their needs and amplifying their needs and helping to get them connected with resources. And one of the top three areas of need include, how do I run an online community event? How do I replace these meetups? And what is wonderful is that groups have been moving in this direction already. And so uh, Google did release a guide of how they run online events and they provide some tooling as well. But so has um, WordPress put out a guide and other projects that have gone down this path. And so in the spirit of open source, everyone's sharing their knowledge and FOSS Responders is trying to aggregate that so that you can go to their site, find it and take advantage of it. Yeah, definitely something I, I've seen. One of the silver linings is, you know, these communities typically have been a lot of sharing, but even more so. Everybody's responding. Everybody's kind of rallying to the cause. Uh, Delissa, want to give you the final word. Uh, obviously, you know, this is a nice segment uh, piece that we usually expect to see at Red Hat Summit. So uh, what else uh, do, you, do you want to help share with the community as, as final closing thoughts? Well, I think that, you know, we're not done yet. We have been so fortunate to be able to highlight you know, the, the contributions that women make to open source. And that is uh, an honor that we get to take that, that role. But we need to continue to, to go down this path. We are not, we are not done. We have not made the improvements in terms of the, of the representation in our communities that will actually foster all of the improvements and all of the solutions that need to happen in the world. So we're gonna keep down this pathway and really encourage everyone uh, to think through how you can have a more inclusive team, uh, how you can make someone feel included if you're participating in a community or in an organization so that we really continue to bring in uh, more diversity and have more innovation. Well, excellent. Thank you so much, Alyssa, uh, for, for sharing. And thank you to, to both of you award winners and uh, really look forward to reading more online, definitely checking out some of the uh, initiatives that you shared, uh, valuable pieces that hopefully everybody uh, can, can leverage. All right, lots more coverage from Red Hat Summit 2020. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.